welcome back to the Bioshock The Complete Story. Just to remind you guys, this has been the Rapture storyline. I haven't gone over the games yet, but to give you an idea, this video takes place just prior to Bioshock 1. Now, this is the third and last part, so if you have not watched the first and second one, I highly recommend you do so. I wouldn't want you to be lost here, that would kind of defeat the purpose of what I'm doing. Alright, let's finish the Rapture storyline, shall we? Throughout 1959, a full-scale decline of Rapture took place, with many large battles occurring between the armies of Andrew Ryan and Atlas. Ryan used this opportunity to test many of Ryan Industries' new plasmids and gene tonics on citizens in the streets through Sinclair Solutions. During the same time, the technology of Big Daddy saw great advances under Dr. Alexander's influence. From the very beginning, Ryan labeled Atlas a parasite and an enemy of Rapture, using the press to turn the citizens against him. With the final test with the Alpha series of Big Daddies completed, Ryan Industries began to release the first functional Big Daddies into the streets to keep the citizens away from the Little Sisters during their work. Following their initial release, many accidents involving the protectors were reported by the press. But the aggressive nature of the Big Daddies was already known by Ryan and the scientific community. You guys remember, right? Dr. Sushong himself was one of the first victims even before their first public appearance. Ryan used it to his advantage because even the protectors weren't enough to keep Atlas's people from abducting the girls for their Adam. He then continued to use the press to publish propaganda reports of his victories against the rebellion, which made Atlas earn the label child killer in the newspaper. As the conflict escalated, the bad side effects of Adam became noticeable among the population, as Dr. Steinman, a well-known surgeon in Rapture, became confused by its degenerative effects, which resulted in acts of atrocity during his operations. Using this information, Atlas fueled the hysteria of the population about atom shortages leading to riots. During the same time period, Bridget Tenenbaum, who'd vanished after renouncing the Little Sister program, began to abduct the gatherers in order to save them. That was reported to Ryan, though, who immediately began a campaign to discredit her, using the newspapers to reveal the truth of her past in the German concentration camps. More and more districts of Rapture began to be affected by the war. Apollo Square was used by Ryan's authorities as a concentration camp to contain his opponents, while Persephone Penal Colony was still under Sophia Lamb's control and it cut off from the rest of the city. Orcadia was forced to close because of incidents involving an atom addicted nature cult called the Saturnine, and Rapture's famous artist, Sander Cohen, who by the way is my favorite, was finally forced to close Fort Frolic. Although he did promise the citizens a final frolic. Rapture's Memorial Museum was also closed to the public and it converted into the proving grounds to train the new Big Daddies. Even the peaceful Dionysus Park was flooded during the war by the reporter Stanley Poole in an attempt to hide his treachery from Lamb's followers. And Siren Alley, whose residents suffered from rising unemployment rates, was turned into the city's red light district. The violence escalated as the condition of the city continued to deteriorate, and even the press began to turn against Ryan. An editor of Rapture Standard spoke out against Ryan's policy of controlling the press for personal advantage, and he eventually was hanged in public under suspicion of being a spy for Atlas. With all these splices becoming more and more organized, Ryan Industries' only response was to make elite versions of the new Big Daddies, more adapted to fight than to protect, and to ask McClinton Robotics for new deadly models of security bots. Rapture Central Computing was also commissioned to design a new model of protector called the Lancer, intended to use a new type of weaponry called the Iron Laser. These bots and protectors were ultimately never involved in the war, as Minerva's Den, which was the center for advanced technologies in Rapture, was disconnected from the rest of the city by a man named Reed Wall.
in the end of that era, Andrew Ryan, who was seeking solutions in seclusion within Rapture Central Control in Ephaestus, attempted to maintain control by establishing harsher laws such as limiting the population's movement, shutting down the Bathysphere network, and enacting the death penalty for anyone who broke these laws. Eventually, even the newspapers were forced to cease publication as Ryan instituted Security Order 217. However, the public disorder continued to escalate. And in an act of desperation, Ryan violated the greatest virtue he held dear, which was free will. He introduced a type of pheromone into the air, which allowed him slight mental control over all the atom-addicted citizens. And once he had complete control of the city, Atlas went into hiding, like all the few remaining sane citizens, leaving the insane splicers roaming the streets of Rapture. And this is where Bioshock 1 takes place, guys. Next time we'll be covering the first game, uh, followed by the second one. And if enough of you guys request it, I'll be covering Bioshock Infinite, which, by the way, has nothing to do with the first or second game. So stick around, guys. Bioshock 1 should be coming out very soon. In the meantime, go check out the other complete stories. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video. And as usual, cheers for watching, guys.